The town of Adamstown, County Dublin was built in 2003. What is noticeably different about Adamstown compared to other communities in Ireland is that approximately 70% of the people living here are born to non-Irish parents, mostly Indian, Pakistani, African and Eastern European. So, Iboon, you're one of the many <laughs> residents living here in Adamstown. Can you just tell me a little bit about what Adamstown is and just why you decided to settle here? I love the houses, the buildings, and the space. But I think what I love the most about it is that it is very diverse. You know, so again, so you see some areas that are that have, you know, um, new communities there, but it's just maybe one community that is there. But, you know, just if you look around the table now, you know, you can see, you know, some form of diversity there. So it's the same thing, like the block where I live, there are 10, you know, 10 um, houses on my block. And every door is somebody from a different nationality. That for me is amazing. I think in Adamstown, you're not trying to fit in. You belong, it's, it's home, it's, it's okay. You're not knocking on people's door and trying to let me in. It's yours, you're happy there. I think that's what I like about Adamstown, it's home. I think sometimes the what brought you to Ireland question for me is always like what I call the immigrant question, you know. So after 15 years in Ireland, I just balk at asking me that question and I'm like, no, I'm just here. Take me, <laughs> you know. I love, I love being smart, honestly. <laughs> That's my one weakness, you know. I hate not knowing stuff. Is it like business or? So I think I've been studying all my life since being in Ireland. So I've done it up to PhD level now. I think I use education to, to fight most of the battles I have to fight. There's a massive um, anti-immigrant sentiment everywhere, not just in Ireland, you know, but everywhere now. So you find that, you know, people, the darker they are, you know, the more difficult it is has been for them to progress into paid employment here in Ireland. It's not hearsay, it's my story, it's a lot of people's stories. Oh, that's, ask every parent who has a teenager. <laughs> my two boys are 13 and 15, and so they are that age where they technically know everything, so again. <laughs> These young people, they are comfortable with difference. They don't have to judge difference. You know, they don't have to judge it as good or bad. It's just something that is there, you know. I think that if, if you've come from a place where, you know, people of color have never been your manager, and then one day you're working and the CEO of the company is a person of color, <laughs> you, you know, how do, you know, so how do you, you know, associate all of that. So, so we disadvantage our kids or our, our whole system if we don't allow that diversity to... I let it happen naturally. Yeah. I mean, if you... Mm -hmm. We have um, one particular child... I can, I can name size so many different kids, but one, yeah. take one child, for example. Um, her home language is passed to her, um, her educational language where she learns from about her home country, her parents' home country, I should say, yeah. is Urdu. Uh, <laughs> she... Uh, her religious language is Arabic. Uh, she speaks English here. Now, she has all these okay, languages. She has well. English here, Irish is mandatory, and next year she's learning German. Oh, and, you know, English and, and Irish is too much for you know, me. And, you know, it's just, you see, and it's just yeah. not, it's there. It's you know, there. It, uh, it's, it's a, a richness is there. Ah, oh, that's very good. And where are you heading for? Next year, I'm going to Poland for the whole calendar year. Oh. For the whole calendar year. I'm principal of the place. Uh, never intended to be principal, by the way, but it's just because the place is close to where I live. What we noticed from the start, in the very beginning, when we first moved in here, was um, that over 80% of our population, our parents, would have a third level degree or higher. Um, so we had a lot of doctors, accountants, um, IT specialists, you name it. We would have 
anything between 40, 50, maybe a bit more, a um, number of different nationalities here, uh, numerous languages. A lot of our kids are multilingual. They would have two and three different languages, which is great because they actually pick up Irish very fast and they have a lovely ear. They can pick it up uh, they're really good and there's no chip or anything like that, chip on the shoulder. Uh, but we'd have a lot of languages, yeah, over, up to 50 nationalities here. When I first came out of college, it was 87. Even walking up Graff Street was mostly white Irish. And that's where my teaching was. It was all it was white Irish, but this has changed. And they bring their religions, and they bring their languages, and they bring whatever else, and they'll also bring their accents and all that kind of stuff, and you know, add a bit of colour and a bit of vibrancy to this country. And I think I think it's not it's, it is very positive. There's such a richness there. I mean, I have parents who, um, you know, from Ireland and who moved up from down west of Ireland, or whatever, and they just love it. They said their kids come home with so much. And it's, it's, it's that hidden curriculum that they mm. have inside in the school. It's not, it's taught curriculum as well because we're very conscious of it, but it's also that hidden curriculum mm -hmm. where kids learn, have their best mates who are from different countries, or parents yeah. are from different countries, I should say. Because these kids, and a lot of parents have a difficulty. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a difficulty, you know, some parents might want to go back to home countries or whatever, but their kids mm -hmm. are Irish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually only yeah. just had that yeah. conversation yeah. with Armstrong's yeah. 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 wife. Yeah. You pointed that out, you know, we, yeah. we, you know, when we are talking, we just, think of ourselves and the one we forget these kids, we are, they are actually born here and you know, that just gives them that opportunity to be Irish people. I'm from Nigeria. When I came to Ireland, I needed to work. I got a contract with uh, some of the nightclubs in Dublin. One of them was uh, Copperface Jacks. I was selling aftershave in the toilet, making sure the place is clean. So I did that for about four years in Coppers. I had a degree in business, right? And when I came to Ireland, they said the degree wasn't recognized in Ireland. So I went back to do law, you know, and I went to DBS and I did law. It was a three years course, finished that did a master's in business. I made applications to many places. Still, I still couldn't get any job. When I started taxiing first, there was this slogan that was going on on the radio, uh, late night shows, people ringing in and say, oh, then the Nigerian taxi drivers, they don't know their way. It got to a stage where Nobody wanted to get into a black man's taxi. Sometimes some people come, they say, do you know where you're going aggressively and rudely? And some of them will say, go back to your country. Yeah, but my general feeling about Ireland, number one thing is I want to grow my family here. It's a very peaceful place to bring up young children. That's my basic reason why I still want to live in Ireland. Uh, Shahid, leaving your home country, your country of origin, and coming anywhere is always going to be a sacrifice on some level. And for you, you know, you had a good job in the military in Pakistan. Knowing you were going to leave that, how did that affect you? Leaving one's country under severe persecution is very difficult. Mm -hmm because you belong to that land and you live there, your families, your children. And out of fear of life and out of fear of so many other things, you are then migrating to another unknown horizon. Mm -hmm. In uh, Pakistan, we were quite happy and content with our lives. We had four children and were happily living. But then suddenly the surge of extremist Muslim elements like Taliban's, they started pestering us. And they would say that the woman is not supposed to be working woman. She is just there for childbearing and looking after the children. And she should remain and confined to the house. 
So this was one big concern for my family and my wife especially. Then they threatened us also. Otherwise, you may face the consequences. They will stone you to death. They will put a woman in a place and keep stoning the woman until her death. Other general Muslims, like 80, 90 percent, they do not believe in that. That's why we left, because we were fearing for our life and for our uh, family's life. Here in Ireland, you are at freedom to profess, to teach, to propagate, and to practice your religions. When things were difficult, you were starting life from a scratch. My wife is very beautiful, she's very charming, and she's a uh, real good. A loving experience because uh, that we are going to be together for life. I only have one more question. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you all except Tom. Yeah. I can kind of ask you, Tom. No, sir. You, you can, can, you can answer, answer if you well. want, right? You, you, you and I technically <laughs> don't count for this one. Uh, where's home now? Shahid, where's home? <laughs> the home here, it is here now in Ireland and uh, Adamstown. Because we have uh, associated ourselves uh, right down to earth with the Adamstown community. So it is. Uh, Pretty much, uh, uh, the home is now Adamstown. What about yourself, Armstrong? What yeah. do you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, home, home is a very big word, you know, and it's something very, you know, very precious to to just give it away like that. From both, like I said earlier, my children is my main priority, and they don't see Nigeria as home. This is where they call home. They, I don't think they can even copy Nigeria. So, ah, I don't think so. So, in that wise, I don't want to be like a politician who is neither there or there. No, but I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, he's staying on the fence. I think, you know, when you get older, and that's what I'm thinking, that's why I think where you're I am. Planning yeah. Yeah. So okay. I'm thinking that, you know, in this mind, very young brain, you know, this is home. But I'm thinking when I get into 60, you know, oh, great. <laughs> you know, when See, I get to 60, things change. There's a lot of people who've moved off from the change. West of Ireland here yeah. as well. Back to Carrie. <laughs> Where is home, Tom? <laughs> it's Kerry. Like, well, my, you know, my kids He's are here looking. looking. My kids are looking. And, yes. um, <laughs> but I moved up when I was in my 30s. You know, I moved back from Kerry when I was in my 30s. But there are a lot of people who moved in here to Adamstown as well, from the west of Ireland or wherever, you know. And it's the same, the same draw and the same pull, yeah. you mm -hmm. know. So it's where the kids it's just are. It's slightly different. <laughs> I know, it's only 200 miles down the Yeah, <laughs> it's just ever so slightly easier to get home. I'm like, I'm living in Dublin 10 years ago.